Oh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And as you can tell, we are in an exponential state of mind tonight. Um, we're going to take a look at a very special letter. Uh, we're going to talk about the letter E, which seems uh, rather insignificant when thinking in terms of the English language, perhaps. But uh, the, the letter E is a very, very powerful number. A very powerful number. It is approximately, notice I didn't say equal to here, but it's approximately 2.718281. Three yada yada yada, and it's very important that we put these dot 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 at the end to show that the number does continue on infinitely, has an infinite number of decimal places. However, those decimals do not form any kind of repetitive pattern whatsoever. Unfortunately, I, I wonder does that remind you of any other famous number? Hmm. Perhaps it reminds you of pi, who we also said was approximately 3.14, yada, 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 yada. Another, another number that's very special, goes on forever and ever. In fact, it's such a special number that we created its own symbol for it. And that's the same thing with E. Um, our goal this year in our course is to expose you to this number E, um, give you some basic information, help you build a little bit of confidence with it, and then as you get into higher levels of math, it'll become more of a significant number, and you'll maybe gain a deeper appreciation for why he's so special. And and it, it's it, it may feel like we just pulled this random number out of thin air right now, but um, you know later on in your mathematical career, hopefully you'll have a greater appreciation. A um, couple of important things about E. E is is a what we call a constant okay a constant is the opposite of a variable okay in other words e is not a variable a variable is something that changes over time as opposed to a constant is something that e is always going to be 2.718 all the time any time of the day every day of the week every week of the year um, also e is called an irrational number Okay, as opposed to rational. Uh, let's see, what else is famous? Uh, e was uh, named after an 18th century famous uh, Swiss mathematician named Leonard Euler. Now check out the spelling on Euler. I'm not making this up. It is spelled U, or I'm sorry, E-U-L-E-R, but it is pronounced Euler. Okay, and I'll tell you what, if you go to college in a couple of years and you, you, you will blow the socks off of your professors if you know how to pronounce Euler's name correctly, um, I think that will be very impressive. That might be worth an extra 10 points on a test. Our first big challenge is trying to graph this rascal um, called f of x equals e raised to the x power. And this is called your natural exponential function okay again just as a mere fact that he has his own name tells you how impressive and important this function is in higher levels of mathematics so the first thing we're going to do we're going to use a lot of calculators so make sure you got your calculator handy and warmed up and the first thing we want to do is talk about where in the world on our calculator is the a special button for e um, perhaps you'll notice this rascal right here, um, there's a button that says LN on it, which we'll talk about later. And right above that is, you'll see a very faint E to the X. And, excuse me, um, that's the one that I like to use. So we can hit the second button, okay? And then we'll come down here and we'll hit the LN button. And what's gonna pop up on your screen, and it's not real easy to see, but on my calculator screen, you'll see E uh, squared. So. Um, the reason I like this button here on this side is that as soon as you hit the E, the calculator automatically um, has the exponent built into it. Okay, it'll automatically ask you for an exponent. So I just typed in two and then I hit enter and you notice it spit out 2.789, yada, yada, yada. Um, there is another button on here. It's over here above the division bar. And again, if you hit the second button first and then come over here and hit that division bar, you'll get another E, which I showed you here. Unfortunately, that one doesn't have the exponent pre-built in. You would then have to hit the uh, caret button, which is right above it and then type in your exponent. Not a big deal, but here's the bottom line is I don't use this button. I use this one over here every single time. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get ready to graph this rascal. Let's go to the Y equals uh, menu and type this one in. Okay, first things first, when I was on my Y equals menu, um, this is what my uh, screen ended up looking like. I, again, I just hit second E. As soon as it asked me for an exponent, I typed in X. 
Um, and then I was ready to graph. Before I hit the graph button, I did go to the table menu. I was looking at uh, the values of x starting at negative 2 at the top, going down until 4. You'll notice that the values start off, uh, they're all, all positive on this list. Um, they start off very small up here. They gradually get bigger, bigger, and then they start to take off like a rocket. And you'll notice that uh, these, the, the, by the time x equals 4, the y value already has a height of 54, so it increases very quickly. Again, this does, uh, it is an exponential function, just like the ones we graphed in uh, last night. And typically our exponential functions behave like this. Uh, we wrote down a whole bunch of characteristics last night. Uh, we talked about the domain and the range, and we talked about the y-intercept always being a 1. And most importantly, we talked about this asymptotic behavior. We said there's a horizontal asymptote right here on the, y, or on the x-axis. And we're going to see all of those same features on this graph. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to show you here a picture of what my graphing screen looked like, and then I'll pull up a piece of graph paper and we'll plot the points as carefully as we can and draw them in. Okay, getting a glimpse of what our calculator screen looked like right here, you'll notice that the graph um, appears to be right on top of the x-axis and then it rises very sharply here. It's important to know that this portion of the graph never does touch the x-axis, although it gets infinitely close, microscopically close, but does not touch it. And we need to do that as much justice as we can when we go to graph our own. Um, I'm going to be very careful as I plot my points. Um, I'm going to plot exactly the ones I see up here on my table of values. As far as those decimals go, I'm just going to do the best I can and get them as close as possible. And then, uh, and then we'll draw it in as carefully as possible. The first thing, though, I want you to do here, do me a big favor and draw your asymptote first. Okay, I think this is a fantastic habit to get into. A nice dotted line right on the x-axis. We're going to label that as y equals 0. That's the equation of just the asymptote itself. And, and I, I just think that's a good habit to do first. Okay, I tried to plot the points that fit on my paper here the best I can. I'm going to pretend that I started way over here start off growing very slowly and then curving up very rapidly way off my screen I tried to estimate where 3 comma 20 ish was and it's just a very interesting graph uh, of course it crosses the y-axis right there at 1 I want you to be very careful when you draw this section of the graph I don't what we don't want to see is we don't want to see the graph start to curl back up in any way shape or form so get rid of this part of your graph don't let it curl back up make sure it's that it's getting closer and closer to the x-axis like a magnet being drawn together Okay, so there's our first graph, and um, actually I want to import a couple of pictures here that uh, show you how e to the x compares to a couple other similar ones. Okay, I brought up a couple of graphs that um, look almost the same. I started with e to the x, which is the one we just graphed. I then graphed 2 to the x power, 3 to the x power. These are all what we call exponential functions. They all fall into the same family. They all behave almost exactly the same. And then I went ahead and graphed these. The, um, let's see, the steepest one is 3 to the x, and then just underneath that is e to the x, and then to the right of him is 2 to the x. So 2 to the x would not be quite as steep as the other two. Notice the bigger that our base gets, the steeper our graph gets. What do they all have in common? Well, they're, of course, they're all increasing functions. They have the same domain of all real numbers. They have the same range of all positive numbers, all y values greater than 0. They all have the same y-intercept of 1 because anything raised to the 0 power is 1. Uh, they all have an asymptote right here of y equals 0. That's what they have in common as well. The only difference is the speed at which they increase. 3 to the x grows a little faster than e, e grows a little faster than 2, and it makes sense because e is approximately 2.718 and then falls in between the 3 and the 2. All right, we're going to be real brave. We're going to try to graph a, a wild function here. f of x equals 1 half times e raised to the 2x minus a 4. Okay, now hopefully you remember from our last lesson that the, probably the most important thing that we do is try to keep track of where that horizontal asymptote goes. Um, initially, it was right on top of the x-axis. When you see this minus 4 at the end of an equation, that means we shifted everything down 4 units. So we now know um, that our new asymptote is going to be at y equals negative 4 instead of y equals 0. So that's important. We could, When part A wants us to write the equation of the asymptote, we can do that right away and just instantly say y equals negative 4. 
Um, the, we're going to also notice that the domain is unchanged. The domain is the set of all real numbers. Um, we could say, how do we want to write that? We could say all values of x such that x is an element of the set of real numbers. Okay, that's some fancy crazy notation that we've dealt with before. Um, as far as the range goes, let's see, we'll try to squeeze that in here somewhere. We'll say it's all y values such that y is greater than 0. And we're going to try to, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I goofed that up. We want to say all y values greater than negative 4 because that's where the new asymptote is, everything above that line. We're going to go ahead, we're going to try graphing this function, try to verify these three answers, and uh, just to kind of confirm that they are indeed correct. So we'll take a look. If I typed uh, that equation into my y equals menu, I, I just I showed my window here just to verify that you get the same window that'll let you know if you typed it in correctly. Again, here's you know here's a good example where you're gonna definitely hit the pause button a few times to make sure you can keep up. Um, we did start off with some negatives. You notice that my y values start off very very close to negative four, just slightly above it, and then they grow rapidly from there. You'll notice by the time x equals four, my y values. Look at this monster y value. It's already one thousand four hundred and eighty six point five. That's just insane. Um, we'll come on over here, and let's see if I can make my pen a little smaller. There is a very distinct asymptote right here at y equals negative four. Okay, the graph does confirm where the asymptote is. That's probably the most important thing. Now crosses the y-axis at negative 3, grows very rapidly from there. And then we could just take a moment to try to plot the, the values we see in our table as accurately as we can. Again, I, can't, I cannot stress this enough. I want you guys to get in the habit of drawing your asymptote right away. Let's put it in there. y equals negative 4. Okay, I want you to label that every single time. And let's do that part first. Now we'll go try to plot the points as carefully as we can. Well, very, very tough graph to draw. We have to be very, very accurate. My pen tip's not as fine as I would like it to be. Made it very challenging for myself to draw it as accurately as I wanted to. So I'm going to give myself probably like a, a D for um, this graphing picture here. Um, but hopefully with your fine tip pen or pencil, you can graph yours a little neater. Now it's time to move on. We're gonna wrap things up real quick. We're gonna talk about simplifying expressions with ease in them and uh, hang in there. We'll be done in just a short little while. What we wanna do here in this last portion of our notes is just to reiterate some of the exponential uh, properties that also apply to E just like they did with bases of X's and twos and threes and so forth. The first one I want to go over is I want to review the product rule. What do I get if I want to multiply e to the fourth power times e to the fifth power? And that product rule says that if I'm trying to multiply two terms with like bases, I'm simply going to add those exponents together and get e to the ninth. The second property that's often confused with the product rule is the power rule. What is e to the fourth raised to the fifth power? Notice a very, very different problem than our last one. And the power rule says if you have an exponent raised to an exponent or otherwise uh, a power raised to a power, we simply multiply those two powers together and get e to the 20th power. So the essence here is knowing when to add the exponents versus knowing when to multiply those same exponents. Okay, we're now going to talk about our quotient rule. What is e to the 6th divided by e to the 3rd? Quotient rule says if you're trying to divide two terms with the same base, we're going to simply subtract those exponents. 6 minus 3 is a 3. So there's a good situation knowing when to subtract those exponents. Simply going to subtract. Okay, uh, the neg all the rules with negative exponents apply just the same. If I had e to the negative 2 power, that would simply be 1 divided by e squared. Moving that base from the numerator down to the denominator allowed me to change the signs of my exponent. And I've got one really crazy wild example here for you to finish things up with. Um, let's call this number five. Okay, let's say e to the x power times the quantity e to the x plus three, all raised to the fourth. And that's divided by e to the two x plus one power. Wow. Does this look like one of the craziest looking bears we've tried to tackle all year or what? Uh, the first thing I'm going to talk focus on is this little part of the problem right here. 
okay? We've got a power of x plus 3 being raised to another power of 3. We're going to use the power rule on that part, and that's going to become e to the, let's see, as I multiply those exponents, I'll get 4x plus a 12. Just making sure we distribute that 4 all the way to both terms, e to the 2x plus 1. The next thing I'm going to tackle is my numerator, okay, right from here to here. We're multiplying two terms with the same base, so we're going to go ahead and add those exponents. Adding the exponents tells me that I'm going to combine my like terms. Let's see, that now gives me e to the 5x plus 12 divided by e to the 2x plus 1. And last but not least, the last property is the quotient property, which says if you're dividing two terms with the same base, we simply subtract the exponents. Let's see, subtracting in this case means we're going to subtract like terms. 5x minus the 2x gives me a 3x, and then the 12 minus the 1 gives me an 11. So e raised to the 3x plus 11 is my final simplified answer. I thought that was a great example because it um, allowed us to use all three of our major properties. We started off with the power rule, then the product rule, and then finished off with the quotient rule. And it was just a good example of how to use all three of them. Really, really like that problem there. Okay, here we go. Our very last problem for the night is just kind of a, a monster review problem. It does not actually include any E's uh, like our, the rest of our lesson has tonight. We just want to review our basic uh, exponent properties here. My first objective on this particular problem is you'll notice that my exponent on the outside, uh, the negative 2, is a negative exponent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, this entire quantity and I'm going to reciprocate that entire quantity so that that exponent changes signs to a 2. Now as I reciprocate the stuff inside, these exponents on the inside do not change signs, and I, I want to emphasize that as much as possible. For instance, this y here is still being raised to the negative 3 power. The only exponent that changed was this outside 2. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start to square everything on the inside. When I talk about squaring this 3, the 3 is just a regular coefficient, so squaring it gives me a 9. But then when we start talking about these exponents, we're going to use our power rule, which means we're going to multiply the 2 times the 2 and the negative 4 times the 2. So we've got x to the 4th and y to the negative 8th. Okay. On the bottom, this coefficient turns into 16. x to the 12th and y to the negative 6. Okay. Um, the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to jump right into my quotient rule. Um, I'm just going to start dividing like terms. Of course, 9 divided by 16, uh, I don't think can be simplified, so we're just stuck with 9 sixteenths. If I focus on my x's and I subtract the 4 minus the 12, I'll get x to the negative 8th. Ooh, now these y's are a tough one. Let's see. Negative 8 minus a negative 6 turns into negative 8 plus 6, so that's going to be y to the negative 2. Now, as far as presenting my final answer, I always want to present my final answer so that all the exponents are positive. So I'm going to leave 9 in the numerator by its lonesome. And then we've got 16x to the positive 8th power, y to the second power. That, ladies and gentlemen, is my final simplified answer. Hope that went fairly well for you. Good luck with all your E's tomorrow, and uh, we'll be there to help you if you get stuck.